So, good morning guys. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Welcome back to the farm for another day. Um, this morning, you would have just seen uh, a shot of the inside of the wagon. What I've got in there is a bale of very nice, very dry haylage. I'm gonna go and feed it to our uh, young calves we've got. So, we've got 50 calves here on the farm that you guys would have seen before that are, how old will they be? Between four and five months old. Um, and we've been feeding them hay and their creep, their like, um, their calf cake um, since they've been here. Um, and we're just gonna change them onto some haylage now. So we, we gave them a little bit of silage at the end of the last week just to see what they made of it. And they went mad for it. So thinking behind it, they'll eat more of it, intakes will be better, they'll grow more. So we're gonna feed them out here and uh, see what they make of it. I'll also show you what we've done to the carpenter here to stop the uh, buggers escaping because they were they were getting out every night, but we seem to have nipped that in the bud. Right, so here we are in the calf shed. Here are the calves. They all start shouting at me now that they want feeding. Got 25 that side, 25 this side. Um, John had the idea of ordering a few more of these scaffold clamps. We have a few scaffold poles lying about. Um, so we got some scaffold poles, some scaffold clamps, and we just clamped them to the feed barrier. So the calves can't get out of that gap, but they can feed absolutely fine. We've also got some joiners in there as well. Um, it just stops us having to shut the doors on the end all the time and also turn up every morning and chase five or six calves back in, which was quite annoying. So, there are the calves. That little one there, you can see chewing his cud. He's called Nige. I don't know why I called him Nige, but he's called Nige. He's friendly. He's the little one. But uh, that's a tractor and wagon, so we'll, we'll spit it out. I'll spit half out, turn around, and come back the other way and we'll do the same again. Um, and we'll see what they make of it. I know you guys are probably fed up of seeing me in the tractor cab at the moment because all we seem to be doing is feeding, but it's just the way it is at the moment. Now as you would have seen bales don't really feed that well out of this wagon um, or any wagon really to be honest. Um, that's been chopping up for a good 30 minutes before feeding it um, just to try and get it into a state where it will come out the door somewhat easily. But you just gotta be patient with the bales because they will come out and they will come out in one lump. So you gotta be prepared to move when it comes. What we'll do is go and start mixing the next load. Phil will let all those cattle back out to their feed passage in a minute anyway. And when we come down to feed the cake, we'll see how they're getting on, whether they're eating it. The uh, scale on the wagon's having a funny five minutes. They did it the other day as well, whereby it, like it goes to minus 100 a kilo so you think you've finished loading or unloading the wagon and there's still loads in there because the scale's not playing ball and now it's on minus 30 minus 95 don't know don't know what to think like do i zero it and start again do something that's for sure but uh what i'll do is i'll skip the rest of the feeding because you guys have seen a lot of that recently uh and then we'll pick it up when we go and see the calves and then we'll see what we got on for the rest of the day there is someone here scanning our platform sheep to our sign sheep um, but they'll be done probably before i'm finished feeding uh, and then we've got the main lot of sheep to be scanned next week so we might might pick that up then right, so i've just finished doing the rest of my feeding still raining here. It's just horrible weather in January so far. Whatever happened to like nice cold crisp dry mornings? 
need to bring them back. Um, I'm just going to take the uh, shear grab off the Manitou here and we'll go and pick up some tape and we can uh, go and feed the calves. The really nice thing about the Manitou, just turn the ignition on, hold the button here, watch the lights flash. That then releases the pressure here so you can just whip the pipes off. You say goodbye to your pipes. Make sure you change that handle, otherwise nothing will happen. And you're good to go. So uh, yeah, we'll go and get some cake and we'll feed the calves. Right, here we are again with the calves. Now, they were all eating, the ones that are here before I came in. But now I'm here with a bucket of cake. They think, oh, we're getting cake, so we'll stop eating silage. But uh, they seem to be munching away on it. The other nice thing about it is with hay, as nice as it is, you go to kick it in, it just bounces back. Whereas this stuff, we can push it all up, look, and it will stay there. So, I mean, to be honest, it's haylage. It is pretty dry. It's effectively hay anyway, but they'll, um, we'll see how they go in the next few days with that. We'll feed them some cake. So this is the cake we feed them. It's like an 18% protein um, nut. It's made from, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Byproducts. So it's not like chuck full of soya and all that sort of stuff. It is wheat distillers, um, bits of leftover stuff from grain and whatever. It is, it is made from byproducts, so we're not importing stupid amounts of uh, cereals that we don't need to. They do really well on it, so I'm gonna get my bucket and feed them a minute. The heifers down there, which will go to the bull in April, they also get a little bit in the morning, so we'll feed them as well. And yeah, that'll be uh, coffee time for us then. Where's my mate Nige? Here he is. Look at him, he's so small and tiny. Aren't you Nige? But he's friendly. Nige is a friendly one. And he eats just as much as the rest of them. He's just, just small. There you hey? He's really good friends with Gus. When Gus comes down here, he likes to stand there and have a chat with him. He has got a mate who's small. That one there, 95. Um, there's one at the end there that's a little bit smaller as well. There's three that were smaller than the rest. But better feed these guys before they get aggy with me. Right, so just finished my bowl of Alpen at coffee time. My bowl of Alpen every morning. Uh, I'm sure it does some good. Um, I'm here in the first clamp. I've just pulled the sheet back on the top because I'm going to use what's left of this face here probably to feed the sheep. They're over four tonne load. Um, one thing about pulling back solid is I used to hate it when I was on outdoor pits. Chucking tyres that were full of smelly effluent water and oh, it was grim. Indoor pits, if you've got an indoor pit, you are winning at life. And uh, we've converted to using sandbags now. We've got rid of most of our tires. And what a difference they make. I mean, there is no spoil on the top of that pit any different as there would be to tires. We're using sandbags, which are much easier to store, much easier to chuck around. They stay dry, stack them on a pallet. And um, yeah, just makes life a lot easier. It takes me two minutes to roll the sheet back instead of 10. And uh, you don't mind doing it then, do you? Instead of trying to get as much as you can before having to roll the sheet back. This is something I picked up off John. He always leaves steps cut into the pit so you can get up there safely to uh, pull the sheet back. So I've sort of adopted doing that strategy as well. But I'm gonna get the tractor, got the grab hooked up again now, um, and we'll feed the sheep. Now, in order to try and give you the best feeding experience, I'm gonna set you up in the tractor here somewhere. I'm gonna pull the new exhaust, that'll be hot. Try and bolt you on the side of the wagon here. a bit of the feeding going on. You've got one sheep there that refuses to stay in a pen. You put it back in and it just jumps straight back out again. But she never seems to go anywhere. So um, what we'll have to do is catch her eventually. And down the end there, there's a pen that's got hurdles on the front that they can't jump out of. So she'll have to go in one of those pens, but I can't grab her on my own. So I'm not even gonna try. So after dinner now, I'm just mixing up a bale in the wagon there um, for the sheep. So two lots of sheep here on bales. 
and the one big farm lot are on clamp so just mixing up one bale there or another one open to do the second lot afterwards whilst that's mixing because it takes a minute uh, I'm gonna go pick something up off our machinery pad it's given me a bit of an idea I'm sure a lot of you watch Tom Pemberton and uh, one of his latest videos as I'm recording this he uh, he built himself a silage pusher out of some purlings he had lying around and pallets I think the idea was actually given to him by someone else so I can't remember who that is but anyway so that gave me an idea we've got a v-shaped silage pusher on our stone landing as we call it um, already made but it hasn't got any brackets on it for um, mana or anything so I thought why don't I try and weld a hoop on that I can use with the pallet fork and use that to save having to keep hooking and unhooking the wheel on the uh, scraper tractor on and off so I'm gonna go pick it up we'll have a look at it and I'll uh, sort of explain what I want to do with it right so I brought the said sled up to the workshop and here it is so Craig made this um, I believe or it might be before Craig's time even but it used to have a proper pin and cone headstock on it and uh, just used to fit on the handler uh, but that headstock was nicked for something else it's fairly simple just a v-shaped sled um, the rubber's perished on the bottom but might stick a bit of timber on there or something as you can see it's nice and nice and deep so size isn't going to go over the top of it and um, my thought here was we'll just put a sleeve on the top um, I've got some angle iron in the back of the Honda there uh, and then we have just one sleeve on the top and then we can have it offset on one pallet fork so it sticks out the side of the Manitou that way you're not driving on what you're pushing up so that was my thinking behind this I'll offer up the angle iron see what it looks like and uh, we'll go from there right guys it's nearly close of play here today it's gone dark now so we're just uh, getting everything in the workshop ready to go home Gus is here with me having a runabout you can see. yep so I've got my two pieces of angle iron here um, they are now tacked together from the other side and you can see through there uh, and I just grooved out a big V down the middle of the two uh, welder seam down there tomorrow we'll then get it centered on here um, and we'll weld it to here here and here that's the plan anyway but I think that is enough for tonight so we will uh, catch you in the morning <laughs> day two welcome back to the workshop so back on with our sled here see last night I started grooving out a nice V in the middle here to fill with weld to weld these two together properly then I'm going to clean up this and weld it all on there but, uh, got a bit more cleaning to do on there first so that is where we shall start I bought the Manitou two and the forks over so that when we're finished slide the fork in test fit it and then I'm going to cut this uh, in line with the butt end of the fork and, uh, and then Craig suggested welding a plate on the bottom to stop it tipping off so we'll do that as well safety first safety second right I think we are ready to weld it so uh Welder's all there, turn it on, set it up, we'll give it a go. Right, now admittedly I'm not the best welder in the world, but we have filled in the seam I made, took a few little goes, but Got some nice ones. This was quite a good one. Uh, another nice one up there. That was a good one. Some of it went very badly, but anyway, that's that done for a minute. Let it cool down. I'm gonna clean up the bar underneath and the little other bit I welded in yesterday, this one. Clean up where I'm gonna weld it to and then we'll stick it on there. So, it is now stuck on. See the welds there? Not the worst, definitely not the best. Not a bad one. You wouldn't want me uh, welding a ship up, that's for sure. So what I want to do now is get a plate to go on the end there. Again, it'll give it a bit more strength welding right across. Weld it all up around that seam. And next thing we do is measure pallet fork. Get a trusty tape measure here. So from the butt end there, where the fork will stick out, to 47, which is there. That's where I need to cut it off. Get the big disc grinder for that one. 
That's how you're supposed to store a grinder. I always put them down the other way up, but we did a course and that is what we were taught, so. Right, I'll just uh, smoothen that up with the grinder a minute and then we'll find a bit of plate to go on the bottom. Right guys, we're finished. Just done a few little final touches. I put a chain on. The Stops it coming off, but um, stops it sliding off the front of the fork. Put it around the back of the fork, and it's on. So we'll turn it around, put it on the forks, and uh, go and give it a go. See how it goes. That won't work. I don't think my chain idea has quite worked. Sitting underneath there. Not that tight, but. Dunno. Now, the main reason why this thing might not work is purely down to my welding ability, but uh, I'm hopeful. See, it sticks out the side of it. We haven't got to drive on what we're pushing in. So uh, take it in the sheep shed here and see what happens. Definitely working. Might just be a big waste of my time, but it does seem to work. What will be the uh, deciding factor is in the morning when we come in and push up what they haven't eaten overnight. See if it'll push that in or not, but uh, we'll give it another go a minute. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. We have got some bits of like nylon board that we could put on the bottom of it just to act as a bit of a runner so it's not on metal on concrete. So that might be an idea. I'm going to take it down the other sheep shed and just push that in a minute. So there's one more place I can try it. And yeah, we're, uh, we'll, have a, we'll have a talk about it. I've already made Mark II. So, we've got this piece of nylon board. Uh, it was lying around the workshop. I can't remember what it's from, but um, it's brilliant. It's just the right size. I've got a little lip on the bottom, so that now runs on the floor instead of the metal. I've just tech screwed it straight on. No, uh, no hard work around here. And because this is um, smooth, the side is sort of skids against it and falls off. When it was up against the metal, because it's a bit pitted, it, um, it sort of grabbed the silage and balled it up. So this thing now uh, does a much better job. See, the cows have already chucked it out again, but I am well happy with that. So that's my version of copying Tom Pemberton, who copied someone else, making a silage quicker. So that now we haven't got to. Uh, I haven't got to take the wheel on and off the track all the time, so hopefully that will save us a bit of time in the mornings and the evenings pushing in. It will certainly save the three or four minutes of each time you want to hook and unhook the, uh, the wheel. The little idea with the chain, that didn't work. That, um, that broke as soon as I've done it. But you're always going to be pushing forwards with it, so as long as you're careful, you shouldn't really fall off. These calves are hungry, I've got to give them their cake, so we'll go and get that in a minute. But yeah. I'm well pleased. Right, so I'm just in our new maternity pen with a few of the uh, Charolais sheep. So there's is it seven ewes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ewes, and there's three lambs there at the minute. Uh, hopefully the rest will lamb fairly soon. Just giving them a bit of fresh bedding, and they also need a new bale of hay. So we'll go and get them a bale of hay, and hopefully they will attack the bedding. Oh, hey, would you look at that? It's about the level of my human nowadays. 
That'll keep them going for a solid month or so. There's only seven of them. We got these sheep so poorly trained that whenever anyone goes anywhere near them, they think they're getting fed with cake, which is over there. But uh, they just bleat at you. So I'm going to abscond before I get a headache. So for once, I'm actually going to finish a video in daylight, which is a bit different for the last few videos. Thanks everyone for sticking by the videos lately. January is a really rough month for people that make YouTube videos. For whatever reason, the algorithm doesn't seem to work. No one sees your videos. And uh, I know a couple other people I've watched have said about it as well. But um, thank you to everyone that does watch. The uh, pusher thing that we've made, taking pride of place now in the machinery lineup, which is good. Gus is over there hunting for squirrels. We're gonna go, probably gonna go put some waterproofs on and wash the manitou off, because it is absolutely hanging. But thank you guys for watching. If you wanna see any more, Make sure you hit the subscribe button. Follow us on all our socials. They'll be on the bottom of the screen now. Links also in the description. And yeah, see you guys on another video very soon. Cheerio.